What's up party people? G Fire Productions in a place to be Superman first class in the mix. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the Kraken Jr. Let's get it. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I'm Gerald, excited to share this monster of a PA system with you guys. Now, before we get too far into the video, I'm gonna go ahead and ask you up front to please smash that like button, subscribe to the channel to help us grow and to keep up with new videos, you can always turn on the notifications. And lastly, if you feel in this video helpful at all towards what you do and you wanna give a monetary donation, there's a super thanks button down there somewhere. It's a heart with a dollar sign in it. You can donate any amount that you wish but if you don't it's all good either way i'm really here to share to make our industry stronger better together so that we can all get further faster right so this thing that we call the kraken jr um, it's an amazing box and it serves as another pa system for me to use when i wind up in areas where i have three systems going or needed and i can get that accomplished very quickly with this setup because it sets up so fast and breaks down even faster right other scenarios where i use this system is when there's an opportunity to provide sound but not necessarily a dj controller is needed maybe they just want some ambient music well i can use a tablet a computer or phone to play some music and at the same time give them one or two mics as requested right and then the hub of this box is really the yamaha mg06x mixer and here's the deal the iPad here goes into my backpack. My computer goes into my backpack, phone goes in my pocket, whatever. But the two microphones, this mixer, and all of the associated wiring, all is self-contained in this box with the lid on. And I'm gonna show you all of that later in the video. It's the 3RU version. And uh, the reason why I went with the three rack because this is originally a microphone rack, right? So I got an antenna distro, which provides DC power to up to four mics, but also provides antenna power to four mics and a fifth antenna power out to cascade to another antenna distro unit. But I took two mics out the bottom, put in this power conditioner and made this box very convenient as a PA system. And the cool thing is, is the mics, the mixer fits right in the back with all the wiring and it's just awesome, right? Let me get you guys a little closer and just uh, show you how this all comes together and works out really good. So before I do that, right, I want you guys to know that I've showed up at events and sometimes they don't get the memo and it would literally be like, hey DJ, here's your table. It's sometimes a coffee take table, some rinky dink little small table, not even a full blown four foot table, just here's a table, right? So that's another cool thing about this box because being that it is a shallow rack, um, it's not that deep, like a full blown 19 inch deep uh, rack where those are actually amp racks, but this is a shallow rack designed for microphones. So you can see how that is. And I know you guys know that table, right? So. You can see how conveniently I have the lids right there. So even if this system was up against the wall, I have storage for my uh, front and back cover. This thing fits good. I even get a little bit of real estate on the front of the desk right here. And when I have my Moss Black Pack with me in these scenarios, I can nestle it uh, right in between there. So it takes up minimum floor space. It's convenient, everything fits. And I basically use the desktop of the box to store the mixer and my iPad or computer, right? So let's talk a little bit about the front of this thing. Now I've already mentioned that in the front of this box, I have my antenna distro, two microphones and a power conditioner, right? And then I have the mics. So imagine that um, I got a few things going on. Stuff like this is always in my Moss Black Pack because you know these don't this doesn't live with the box it's just this and other cables that i bring in my backpack in case situations pop up right but look at the idea here although i have a little bit of real estate there if i were to say just set the microphones here you can see they want to uh roll off right so that's the purpose for the two cases here i just set them there and they conveniently create a way for my microphones to stay put without rolling off of the table. And um, even if I, you know, bump it a little bit and try on purpose, you guys can see clearly that that's not going nowhere like that. I mean, I'd have to really 
hit it to knock that off. And again, if I wanted to say charge my phone while I'm waiting or something, I can easily plug this in, plug my phone in right there. And I got a little bit of real estate right there. Okay. Now here are the two antennas. They just fold down. So with the antennas and this uh, plug for the mixer up top, I can easily put the lid on with no impedance and just lock them down on the side. We'll see that when we break it all down. Right. But other than that, you know, we open up the front lid, plug this box in. Everything here is on already. And then I just harness into the mixer. We'll get to the back of that in a moment. But that's the convenience of this system. Now, as far as the uh, mixer and the iPad goes here, I like things to be aesthetic, but functionality is more important than anything. So as you guys can see, I got this, uh, you know, ridges right here. And I chose to just put my mixer to the far edge over here where the uh, rubber feet will still be on here for grip sake. But my iPad can easily move about. And plus, when I switch my iPad out for, say, a computer, if I need more music, you know, than what I can store on an iPad, uh, then I have plenty of room for my MacBook, too. Right. So I just wanted to give you that. And again, I'm, I'm more like an aesthetic person too so I like things to look neat and you know but functionality is the most important right so now let's go ahead and uh, talk a little bit more about the mixer up close now I'm not going to get too deep onto the mixer right I did put out a video explaining what stereo and mono does so if you guys want to know about that just uh, check out the video and the link in the description below but uh, in the meantime I got mic one mic two here or in this case, it's labeled as mic five and six, but they're here, you know, five, mic six, channel three and four, channel five and six. These are stereo channels. So no matter which one I chose to put my tablet on for music, I still have another stereo channel here if I wanted to incorporate a DDJ also. So it's very convenient. So the only thing that will be missing from this system is some XLR cables out to two powered speakers. But other than that, the mixer is pretty simple. You got a two band EQ, you got gain up here. These control the volumes of each channel accordingly. And I just wanted to share that with you guys, right? Now, whenever I rent this out and set this up for people, cause they never come and get this from me and take it. I normally go and rent this out and uh, set it up for them. But I do tell them you can touch knobs, but not buttons. And here's why my microphones uh, their gain is already set, so I have a 26 dB pad on both of these because my mics are so powerful that even if I turn the gains all the way down, you would still get signal from this channel when this is up. So imagine that if my gain is set here, you know, where I need it on the mic and somebody's talking, well, it would be a good uh, volume like here's mic five. Hey, this is mic five and you guys can see green is clean. If I get a little bit excited, yes, it goes in a yellow, but it's not redlining. However, with the same tone and the same voice, if I unpad this, I am overdriving this like crazy. So this is why I tell people touch knobs, not buttons, right? Other than that, everything is good. We're all set and um, it is what it is. Now, we're not going to get into a debate about gain structure. All that's different for different mixers. So you guys can read the manual for yourself and leave all your comments down below in the description. And then, of course, here's an iPad. Now, one thing I would like to share is I do have lots of little uh, cables and stuff like that out of convenience. And so in the case of my iPad, it is um, USB C based. And here's what I've done. Another part of my wire harness here is for audio from the iPad and also USB-C into the iPad. So what I'm doing is I am charging the unit at the same time getting audio from the unit, but with a simple cable. So if you guys want to know about this cable, um, I'll put a link in the description to where to buy it on Amazon. But also I have a lightning version of this because sometimes people show up with an iPhone or something that requires a lightning plug, right? So now let's go ahead and take a look in the back and just to give it to you guys so you could see it, I'm gonna start some music right here. It's not audible because I don't have any speakers up or anything, but I just kind of wanted to let you guys see that, right? And if you ever run into that, you know, it's too loud because I can overdrive it. The uh, channels three and four, they don't have a gain. So you even have to do it, you know, with the volume button to where it's desired or I could turn the volume down on the actual iPad and you know gain it that way if I just wanted everything to be like triangle, 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 or three o'clock, three o'clock, three o'clock, right? So, you know, it's options, but again, I'm not gonna get into gain structure in this video. 
So to give you guys another side view perspective in case, you know, there it is, boom, got small space to take up, good real estate, functional. Let's talk about the harness. Now, what I used to do in the past in the back, I used to be worried about what that looks like if somebody looks back here. So if it's up against the wall, no problems. You know, again, you know, this is all about aesthetics for me at this point. But if this is up against a wall, nobody's going to see that. Who cares? And if somebody sees it now, I still don't care because look how that looks. If you really look in there, you can see that that is neat, functional, and it serves multiple purposes besides just looking neat. Because you guys probably like, man, who cares if everything wires and it works? What are you worried about? Well, I also need storage back here because I built this system by design on purpose to be able to store this little mixer, both mics and all, all the wires that goes with that setup to make it really fast and convenient for not only transport, but setup and breakdown, but functionality, right? So what have I done? Well, this power strip does come with eight strips, but as you can see, they're all sideways. And so that is the reason why the power for this mixer is actually plugged in on the front of the box. So as you can see it right here, if I unplug the mixer, let's get you back a little bit. If I unplug this, the mixer goes off, plug it back in, there's the mixer. And it does have a power button right here, right? So there you go. So I just wanted to share that with you guys real quick, but I used to do this thing where I would take this lid, you know, or the back lid here, and I would uh, latch it onto the side over here but over on the other side, I would have to bungee the you know thing and put some bungee like around these two holes in the lid right there just to help hide that. But now if that's like that, I don't really care. But here's the other deal, right? All of these turn sideways is the reason why I have to plug the power for this in the front. I mean, I don't really have to. There's other options, which I may change because shout out to Elliot. He gave me these little convenient plugs to be able to, you know, pull these out and get, you know, not have these not being able to be used so i thought hey that was good if i ever have to plug in a lot more stuff and then again i do have some other plugs right here that i can so conveniently and easy reach so when these are not being used i don't want them hanging out i just simply dangle them in so i may actually take the power for this mixer or the power brick for this mixer plug it in here and kind of uh you know, tuck it in back there out of sight, out of mind, right? Then that way, um, if I ever have to reconvert this back to a full blown mic rack, I can take the harness out more effectively because if I have to do that right now, what I have to do is take these uh, Velcros off to remove this one at a time, right? And as you can see, I got quite a few Velcros to that, that particular wire for the mixer is right there. And then it makes its way, you know, from through the hole right up front there, if you could see that, right? So it's a thought process, but nevertheless, I don't foresee having to do that anytime soon. And uh, yeah, so when I do reconvert this to a full blown mic rack, as in mic, uh, put two more mics in the place of the power conditioner, all of the BNC cables are available. They're just tucked in up there somewhere out of the way. And again, the goal was to be able to do things you know, systematically, but also functional and quickly, right? So as you can see, as a convenience, I always have this uh, plugged in. Now this is what powers the uh, iPad, so it does mix its way. And right here, it joins in with this entire harness, and then the, the harness breaks off here for audio and power to the iPad, right? But I'm gonna switch out something. I wanted to show you guys this, what also makes this very convenient and convertible. So here's my Moss Black plaque, and I just wanted to demonstrate that I would store it under there just to keep the footprint small, because uh, that's the purpose of that particular system is to be small and footprint and space needed to operate, and it is what it is, right? So if I were gonna be in that situation about changing out the iPad for the MacBook, uh, I could certainly do that because it's convenient, right? Now, the other thing is I wanted to talk about real quick is the box have these ridges or these grooves on top and it serves a couple of purposes. Um, it, it allows me to do things like run cables like this underneath and it's very convenient. And also in the case of my MacBook, uh, this helps with airflow. So we're gonna talk about that a little bit as well. Now what I've done here was took the liberty to lay down my iPad. I just wanted to demonstrate that if I want it to be a little bit less noticeable with this situation, I certainly can as you guys can see right here, it's flat 
And this this is good for like if I want it to be a little bit less noticeable. So if the music is playing, it's playing, you know, but as soon as somebody want to talk on any microphones, I just turn the music down. They make their speech or whatever. And when it's time to turn the music back up again, I just simply turn up the music and they'll usually turn off their microphones themselves or I could just turn the volumes down that way. So a lot of flexibility here. And also by having these uh, grooves in the thingy here, that allows me to do cable runs seamlessly so I can get my iPad down, you know, flat surfaced and stuff like that. So now let's go ahead at this time and swap out the iPad for my MacBook Pro. So that operation is pretty seamless. All I need to do is stop, turn on the volume of the mixer so there's no pop sounds and all the weird stuff that happens with that. And then I could simply put my iPad away somewhere else. And here's my MacBook Pro. And what I wanna share with you guys is these are the um, holes right here where the heat escapes through when it's in operation. So it's on both sides and in the rear of the MacBook. So having this ridge right here, is also helping with that airflow because literally it would sit about uh, right in here. The other very convenient thing is, is once I take these off, in the case of my MacBook, if you guys will notice, MacBook allows me to plug power into any USB-C slot, right? Normally I plug it in over here by default, but I can plug power into any of these slots. And because this harness is already there, look where my uh, headphone jack is. So in my case, I may run this wire, say a little bit behind it, so I can get uh, over here, bend this around and power in right there. And also put in my headphones right there, right? So let's see now, what does that look like for power? And in case you guys can't see, I'll get you a close up of the actual screen. So you can see that the lightning is in the midst of the battery while it's plugged in. And if I unplug it with power here, then you'll see that the battery is no longer there or the lightning is no longer there. Another thing I want to bring up out of convenience is like I have two USB-C ports. If it was that serious, I would just move the mixer over or whatever. But rather than fighting with those two that's over here, I still have another USB-C port here. So if I had to import any files or for whatever music files, pictures or whatever, then I have an adapter that is USB-C to USB-A type that I can easily get a thumb drive in here and you know get those files in, right? So let's take a look at it back because there's something else I wanna to mention to you guys about the power. Now I've already shared with you guys that the convenience of this cable right here is for charging my iPad. It is USB-C type to USB-C, right? Just to maintain consistency because I use Apple products. And with the exception of my iPhone 12, that's the only lightning device I got. But what I wanted to share with you guys is this. This is a 20 watt charger by Anchor, right? And although it will power, as you saw on the front with the lightning in the battery port there, um, this is 20 watts versus the original power brick for the MacBook is probably something like 96 watts or up there, right? It's, it's, it's up there in power compared to that. So what I would do, in fact, instead of using that one to power my MacBook, I would plug this in. And the other thing I would do, I'm gonna just do it right now in advance. I, I use this now as a prop up because without this, here's what it looks like. I can plug this in and as you guys can see, um, it's not gonna be a terrible problem, right? But why have the uh, weight dangling like that if you don't really have to? And versus having something else to put in the box to take up space or rattle around, I'd rather use something that's already in the box. So why not you know, put that right there? There's a little prop up and boom, there it is, right? So now you can see it's a little bit more sturdy. And guess what happens then? The power cable that is for the phone comes out of that charger and goes right into the back of the MacBook. And you probably heard that power up, right? So as you can see, that is very convenient. And as an added bonus, you know, I'm gonna go ahead and make sure I take off um, any stress off the opposite end of the cable and look how that works the macbook hides all the harness and even if people saw that it's straight across the top anyway functionality i still have two plugs here and if i needed to i have another convenience plug here unless 
I plug in in the future my uh, Yamaha mixer power brick and tuck it in. But then I would have two convenience plugs on the front of the box. So all in all, it's a very good way to get a quick PA system up and running. And so just to check on things to make sure everything is good here, I got the volume on full on my MacBook. And here's now the volume for the MacBook right there. And if I needed a little more, I could turn it up, but that's about all I get. So that's probably having everything to do with the volume of this particular video I edited on YouTube. But either way, I could play music here. I could play videos or any audio here and, and get it right into this mixer with no issues, right? So there it is. Now let's talk about next. Um, what does the recovery look like for this? We're going to do it in real time, which means I'm going to have to get back up off the system so you guys can see it all in real time, how it works, and uh, we're just going to do it to it. Yep. Okay, party people, so here's that moment. It is time for the full recovery of this system. And just to give it to you uh, in real time with that slide, I'm going to talk to you guys while I actually break it down starting right now. So one of the first things I usually do is turn down any volumes, the master volume, all of the microphones, it's all good, right? So we ain't got no pop sounds or nothing like that when we disconnect. Uh, as far as my MacBook, that's just my habit. I usually just close it and simply put it in my Moss Black Pack, right? That's how I roll. Uh, maybe you guys disagree with that, but hey, I have not had any issues in doing that, right? So that's put away. Then the next thing I do is I turn my mixer off, but First, I disconnect any speakers or turn them down, but in particular for this box right now, here we are, and I got my antennas folded. I don't bother with turning off my mics because once I unplug this box, everything's going to be turned off anyway, but I do have a habit when it comes to mixers and speakers to make sure that they're turned down and off just to help avoid that pop sound, right? So there it is. I got two mics all bagged up right here. And then I'm ready for the front cover, right? So let's go ahead and grab the one with the actual label on it right here. So there it is, SKB, and put it on the front. Now this part is just simply latching on the sides. Boom. And there it is on the side here, okay? Now, of course, I got one part of the harness here, and I have a second part of the harness that I'm simply disconnecting right and then of course unpowering the mixer so i'm going to get you guys on the back side of this now so you can see actually i'm not going to even get you on the back side of this i'm going to flip this up so you guys can see what i see but what i usually do is let gravity assist me by simply flipping up on the face right so let me reposition the camera so i tell you what everybody as a penalty i'm going to add 20 seconds to the timer or whatever right so here we go taking out my MacBook plug. We're gonna re-divert that over there somewhere and we're gonna plug in the harness for the iPad back in its original power adapter there, right? And here's what I have. I got two microphones. I'm gonna just nestle those in wherever they fit, however they fit. And then there's the other one over there, shoving it in as far as it'll go that way, right? Then the next thing I usually put in here is the mixer. So I try to get either, if it's enough soft stuff around, I'm okay with the buttons, right? But if there's anything, chance for anything being weird, then I'll put the buttons up this way, like so. And it is what it is. And far as the harness go, I can easily route these, say behind it, put it there, nestle them in. And I even have the power cable, which I'm just going to manipulate that in and around stuff, right? And as you can see, it's going in quite well, right? And as long as I got this away from my mixer so it doesn't scratch up too bad, it's all good, right? Now, I have plenty of space to put the top lid on. So all it does is, or this is the back lid, I should say. So all it does is go down flat without fighting with it, without forcing it and all is well, right? And to give it to you a little bit more clearly from this side, here's the latch, and there it is, in full. So as you guys can see, I got that entire PA system in this box, ready to transport, real simple. The only thing that's mostly missing from here is my Moss Black Pack, so I would just simply zip this up like so put it on my back, 
grab this machine and be out. So there it is, party people. You guys saw it. We just talked about the Kraken Jr., broke it down, showed you how simple and functional that is. And if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave those down below in the comment section. Uh, don't forget about the videos I'll be linking in the description of this video as well. And any uh, items that I think you may be interested in for purchase so you know where I got it from, like those little cool adapters. Um, other than that, that's it. I'm Gerald with G5 Productions, DJ Sound and Lighting. To learn more about us, visit www.g5productions.com. Don't forget to give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, rock that bell to keep up with new videos and if you're really feeling it you want to do a super thanks greatly appreciate it thank you for watching peace